But this is Sister C.J. Hammonds with Harvest Ministries. Harvest stands for Happy and Redeemed Vessels and Join Salvation Together. We're grateful for what God is doing and the blessings that He has given us. Never want to take it for granted. Each day is a new day, a new opportunity to serve Him, to do better than I did yesterday, and to forget about the things that maybe I did fail, but I've repented and just press forward to that prize of the high calling that's in Jesus Christ today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to read the first five verses. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Looking at, for Paul said, Therefore I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Been chewing on that through the week as it was kind of dropped in my spirit Tuesday. And I began to look at just different aspects of, of my walk, of the ministry God's placed me in. And so the thought comes to me about devoted to Christ, not a cause. Being devoted to Christ and not a cause. Now, if the Lord will help us, we will try to uh, give you some reason behind that. But Paul was saying he's determining something that he didn't want to know anything among them save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I've learned that no matter who you are and what you do, that without a personal relationship, there is nothing kingdom worthy that you can do. Right, uh, I say this because we can plan and we can schedule all kinds of things and we can use different forms to draw people into the church and bring them to the church. But if all this is not about the person of Christ, then it is all for a cause mm-hmm. that we tack the, the title in Jesus' name we, we tack in Jesus' name on it and we call it a day. Yeah. Whatever we do to draw them to the church, can I tell you that is the reason why they are there. Right. Be very careful when you set things out there, when you attempt to do things. And no, oh, Sister CJ's not went off on the deep end. But I have learned that we can pack out the house with different types of entertainments or events that come. But again, if it is not about the person of Christ, we are there for a cause. We are not there for Christ. We are not there for Jesus. We'll put in Jesus' name and we might say a prayer. We might sing the songs. We might uh, try to put out the plays, but again, people are there for a reason, and if that reason is not for the person of Christ, then they are there for a cause, and what really are we accomplishing? Again, what we draw them into the church is the real reason why they're there. Right, right, right. But we need to be devoted to Christ, the person, and not the cause. Paul expounded in numerous times about being absolutely solely sold out to Jesus Christ. To Him there was none other Mm -hmm. but Jesus. And for that, Paul came as a witness. And he came as a servant of the Gospel. We read in the Word of God even Jesus remarked to Paul and that and that was that was his remark to Paul exactly that this is what Paul was going to do for him. Yeah. Jesus is being quoted as Paul is given his testimony here in Acts 26 and verse 16 it's written in red for therefore Jesus was saying he said but rise and stand upon thy feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Listen, 
He's telling Paul, this is your purpose. And now again, of course, he was Saul at the time. But his purpose, Jesus said, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. But Jesus said, I've come to you for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness. Yes, sir. That was Paul's purpose. And Paul did not take it lightly. No, God. Paul, you know, from that point on, Paul didn't see nothing else in this world to entice him. And he lived for nothing else but Christ. Amen? And so when you have that life, when you have that determination, when you have that sold out feeling, when you have that experience for Jesus Christ, you can say, I am devoted to Christ and I am not for a cause. Hallelujah. I do what I do because of what He's done for me. And what He's done to me. Oh, that just captured my mind when Paul just boldly is letting them know I'm determined not to know anything among you. Again, Paul seen nothing else no matter where he was. Amen. And he lived for nothing else but Jesus. And with the devotion, a relationship is formed. That regardless of what others may do or what they think, it didn't move Paul. Oh, but can we say the same? Are we affected by what others think and say? You know, it didn't move Paul. Paul even exclaimed it. He said, in these things, they don't move me. He, he declared that, amen. But when you got that devotion, that relationship, when Christ is all that you live for, all that you see, all there is just nothing else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And I say, can we say the same thing about us? Are we really that dedicated and sold out that when others come against us and when they do things to us, right. do they move us? Right, right. Oh, God. What is our spiritual temperature today? Right. Hallelujah, I pray I got a fever. I pray I'm hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because yes, if I'm cold, mm. I'm sick. Yeah. Oh, our spiritual temperature is not like our physical temperature. No, just, but can I say, who is Jesus to you? Uh, huh? That, that's the bottom question. Who is Jesus really to you? That's right, that's right. I hear a lot of things. Yes, we do, Mom. I hear what people say. Yeah, yeah. But really, who is Jesus to you yeah. today out there in Radio Land? Paul said, I'm determined. He said, I'm choosing not. He said, to know. He said, I'm not giving attention to, to, to what's among the people right now. He said, for I'm determined not to know anything among you. He said, I'm choosing not to give attention to what is among the people. He said, save except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. No matter if they had their click over here, whether they had ugly faces looking at Him, whether they were applauding Him or trying to sit Him down, He said, I am determined. I'm not going to let what's out here in the crowd move me. Say Jesus Christ in Himself. He gave His full attention. He gave His full focus to the crucified one while He was there among them. And not only just among them, but wherever Paul went. True. Christ was. was number one. Yes, it was, yes. So at any time, no matter, I tell us today, don't lose your focus mm -hmm. as to what God is making you to be. Yes, Lord. He told Paul, he said, I appeared unto thee for this purpose to make yeah. thee a I minister mean. and a witness. Yes, so at no time, don't lose your focus on what He is trying to make you to be for Him. Right, sis, right. But do do this. Do guard at all times. Guard against the poison of self-reliance Yeah, yeah. that is eating up That's the, truth. the church world. True. Our spirituality yeah. is very dismal in this day and hour that we are in. God help us. 
And that is in where our self-reliance, where we think that we do things in our own power and of our own accord. We think that we are holy and we are so mighty and we are so righteous. And oh man, when I walk in the room, step aside because I'm a holy somebody. That kind of thinking, you know, that that we ourselves, that, that we do or we make things happen. And in some way we rely on our own ability to persuade. People. It's out there, folks. Yes, it is, Mom. Yes, There's been times God has used me tremendously. I mean, just beyond expectation or word. That's right. And that flesh, if it is not careful, yeah. I cannot. I'll speak about me because yeah. somebody out there. I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to go down this poison, and your flesh will rise up. Well, hmm. Uh-huh. You've moved up on the spiritual totem pole, yeah, sister. Look what God did. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Beeping us up all for us to be puffed up and have pride. Oh, but I'm here to tell us humility. Humility is Christ. Humility is a Christian. Oh, we are nothing, God. We're nothing, amen. Oh, God used me, sure. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody was encouraged. I'm glad that the house and the church and the and the and the and the garment of God came down and it, and it filled the temple. And I'm glad I was just a part of the service and glad that I could be a part of that God but I am nothing that's true sister that's the truth it's great to have respect it's great to have the proper uh, places that we need to have as as Christians but no no flesh shall glory in his presence is what the Bible says that's why I said it's a poison that is eating us up when we think that we are something the Bible tells us again uh, take heed when you think that you stand that's right yes Oh, God. That's the truth, sister. So many people are pushed out into things because of those types of incidences that happen. And then we wonder That's right. why they backslide. That's right. Did it. Why they go away from the church. Mm-hmm. The poison that we, that we put into our own selves at times if we're not careful and we don't keep our life lined up and in prayer and before God and asking Him continuously, God... Show me. If there's any wicked thing in me, my heart can be deceitful to me. And this flesh, oh, it just desires whatever it wants. Uh-huh. But we don't need to have a self-reliance of ourselves. Just... Our job here is, yes, to proclaim the message. Mm-hmm. Paul said, I didn't come with enticing words. Well, oh, but can I tell you that the Spirit's job is the one that is there to demonstrate yeah. with power. With power. <laughs> We're true. just the vessel, just the mouthpiece, amen, proclaiming the message, glory to God, because Paul was warning, he said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, and that's where all that self-reliance and all that hoopla, and it's great to encourage folks, I'm not saying we all need it, but let us be mindful, amen, don't get a big head about it, don't allow, you know, and I'm glad, I might get a little bubble, but somebody's right there to bust it for me, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Because yes, a man's faith should not be in another man's no. words. That's right. No. That's why he said. But his faith should be in the power of God. Mm-hmm. There is a difference. Yeah. And you can amen or owe me. But man's wisdom, it may bring a response. That's huh? right. They, they might tickle our right. feelings and bring some tears and yeah. touch our hearts by, by the words or, the, uh, or just however. Amen. Yeah. It may bring a response. Yeah, it might. But can I tell you, the power of God not only brings a response, but it brings some results. Yes, and that is what we need in this day and hour that we're in. Yes, yes we do Lord. need a response. But when it is God, there are responses and there are results True. that take place. Yeah, sure. How many times have you sat there, uh-huh. wondered, or even seen, or however it might have been, and you wonder, yeah. did that really happen? True. Because of the result. You've seen a response, but what uh-huh. is the result? Uh-huh. And as a Christian, you will bear that witness. Amen? Sure the is. results will come yeah. when you are devoted to Christ and not a cause in your life. 
It sure will, sir. So many times we get hung up on that. But I have learned that no matter where I'm at and no matter what the question may come to me, can I tell you that Jesus is always the answer. Always, Mom. Always. If you think about that, whatever question comes our way, Jesus is always, always the answer. Learning our purpose of what Christ is making in our life. Who are we to be? Yes, ma'am. Who should we be? That should be a priority. That's the truth, sir. That should be a priority when, when we get saved. God, why am I here? That's right. That's right, sister. That's right. What am I being made in to be for you and your purpose? I have seen folks, uh, you know, that don't allow themselves to open open themselves to the Spirit. Yep. Amen? That's true. Or they get disappointed when it's maybe something they think that they wanted to do and right. God's not leading them down that road. That's the truth, sis. That's the truth. And you know what happens? We get on this emotional roller coaster. We sure will. And that thing will let you ride it just as long as you want to ride. Uh, that's right, that's right. And they're just as miserable. Uh-huh. And we'll blame God. We sure will, sis. You know, and we'll think that it's okay, that that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. No. Amen. By faith and by God's power. That's, the that's why we should not stand alone in man's word, but in mm-hmm. the power of of God. That's right. You got to get off of that emotional roller coaster. <laughs> yes. You've got to accept that this is what God wants you to do. That's true, sister. And knowing that you are in the will of God should be the most important thing in your life because you will find that once you are in the will of God, you are truly happy yes, for once ma'am. in your life. Yes, ma'am. The struggle comes and the misery comes when you are outside yep. of the will of God. That's the truth. Oh, help me today. I'm talking to yeah. somebody. Hallelujah. And we'll know that that we're in that will. The love of Christ. And go back. For He is the Redeemer of our sins. He is our Savior of the world. Don't you know He knows what's best? What He has designed us with the abilities that He has gave us. True, Mama. Huh? True. You know, it's just it's just amazing. And, And I remember sitting and I, I, I'll tell on CJ because I hope to, hope to God that it's helping somebody. But I remember sitting there and I, and I remember hearing similar words that I just said. Yeah. And this was my fleshly thought, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, yeah, that's easy for you to say because you already know or you're already doing it. or yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. Think I want to be that. Yeah. But I don't really know. But can I tell you yes, Lord. that the will of God will pull you out of that comfort zone yes, sure that you have too. locked yourself in, yes, that we've sat up on the little throne of ours and dictated what we are and what we aren't going to yes. do? Can I tell you that chair is going to be gone? Yes. Huh? He's going to pull us out of the comfort zone. Yes, and then you're going to see the things that He has instilled in you, the seeds that He has planted, the storms of adversity that have come in your life preparing you for such a time as this. Amen. And you would have never thought no, God. in a million years, God, that I would be doing this. Right. Oh, man. If I could go back and sitting on the pew and listening to the same thing, I'd have a different way of thinking. Yeah. Hallelujah. We sure would. But don't sit there and think that it's easy for others to say when, when they have found the will of God in their life. And they're obeying the call. They're obeying what? The, the, uh, being a witness. Amen. Being that testimony. All of us are called to do that. And we find, we act like it's just, just nothing important. Friend, you can reach people that I can't reach. That's right, right. Hallelujah. Nobody's going to love your family. You've heard me say it. Nobody's going to love them like you love them. That's right. If you don't pray for them, my God, why do you think anybody else is going to pray for them? I mean, as far as saying it in natural, the sinner, the sinner man's soul, you know, praying for the souls of the sinners of the world, you know, other than that. But, you know, when you have passion and you're praying for somebody, I mean, it just it just builds a whole different True, momentum. It sure will, sis. Is he your focus? Because when He's your focus, His Spirit that is in you mm-hmm. will demonstrate His power. 
through you, through your life, through your speech, through your testimony. That yeah, maybe when you do walk in a room, people will know that there's a difference. That's true, sister. Not lifting you up, no, Lord. but lifting up the God that is in your life. A lot of us that's listening today, yeah. maybe listening later as these are recorded. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of us that have been in some places that, to be honest, yeah. I don't know how we made it through. No. You understand what I'm saying? So that when folks do walk in the church, they do walk into places, they do walk in revival, you know, they walk in, you know that was God. That's what I'm trying to say. You know it wasn't them. You yourself, if you you probably were giving in the towel and throwing in the count and all that other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Even for your own self, you know, but we will think that of others at times. But my God, when they come in, you know. Yes, Lord. That was God. That's the truth, sis. And they do that when you have that devotion to God. When you have that devotion to Christ. Yes, Lord. When He is your focus. Yes. Hallelujah. There is more to this, my friend, than a lip service. They sure is, Sister CJ. Sister. Oh, and don't get on me. My time's winding down, so get happy. But I've learned we say a lot of things. Yes, we will. And we say a lot of things, but we do so little. Yeah, or we do the opposite. Yeah, tell them. Mm. Tell them. Yeah. I've had a couple conversations just this past week. Uh-huh. Spoke to people. Encouraging the people. Yep. Trying to make amends with some people. Trying, huh? Thinking that it's all settled when they leave you. Mm-hmm. They're going to take care of it on their end. <laughs> when they leave you. Yeah. But when they leave you, it's a whole different story. Yeah. Don't do a thing that they said they were going to do. Actually, they did the opposite of what they said they was going to do. You know? And, and and you just have this feeling of just, what happened? What happened? That's the day and hour we live in. These folks confessing that Christ abides in their heart. And when I have to tell a Christian, my friend, spite work will get you nowhere. No, mom. You already know what kind of person I'm dealing with. Yes, sir. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh-huh. No, we've just talked about we need to discuss this. Yeah, yeah. This is not what you should do. Well, I don't know. I mean, the other person probably won't. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you're dealing with that kind of folk. Yeah. And that's why I say we say a lot of things, but we do we so sure little. Do. We sure do. Oh, we do the opposite. Yeah. And when they leave your presence. But can I tell us? Be determined. Not to get caught up in all that. That's right. Don't allow it to change yep. you helping somebody else. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I was I was stepped back. I was hurt. I was I was a little down. Yeah, yeah. The rest of that night when I found out that yes, it had not been taken care of. But be determined not to rely on yourself to do it. Be determined not to rely on others when they give you broken promises, when they leave your presence. That's right. But be determined to be devoted to the person of Christ, the one that suffered way beyond our comprehension, no matter what we read, no matter what historically it gets pulled out. I mean, it is far worse than we could ever imagine of what Christ has suffered for us. And that's why I say be devoted to the person of Christ. Christ because He is the ultimate example. He is the perfect example. And He is who we need to conform and become That's right, in our spirits. Yes, Lord. Again, we can be determined to be devoted to that person. And we do it because of the passion and the drive that is within us. That's right. That's right. How many of us sit there and say, God, I thank You for not writing me off. <laughs> God, I thank you for not giving up yes. on me. That's right. Even though I have asked God, yeah. why? Yes, Lord. Why? Why? God. And sometimes I get an answer. Yeah. But there's more times that I don't. That's the truth. Sir. And I've accepted this statement as that time when I don't necessarily get an answer and it, and it may not come at that time. It may come years down the road. That's the truth. But 
this statement kind of fits these types of situations uh-huh. is that if we had the answer, we could not bear the truth. No. Huh? No. That's why He doesn't give us the answer right then. That's the truth. You'll get it maybe down the road. Uh-huh. But if He was to give you that answer right then and there, He knows that it would probably finish crushing you. That's the truth. But your struggle to find out why, why? continues. Hallelujah. Yeah. It continues in the prayer. That's true, sis. Hallelujah. In that prayer. struggle of just knowing, wanting to know why, uh-huh. it's at least keeping you coming to the source. <laughs> yeah. For if He ever gave us that answer, oh Lord, <laughs> He knows what's best. That's what I'm telling us. I ain't done for that. I'm not devoted to something because it's a church thing or, no. or an event. No, Mama. But it's because of what Christ's power has brought into my heart, into my life. The change that He has made from the, the wretch that I used to be. That's the truth, says. Old wretch like I was. And anybody that comes yeah. into our presence, into our company, will know That's true. that He is our life. There is nothing else. I don't see nothing else. I don't want nothing else. I don't live for nothing else. And when they come into your presence, into your company, they will know it because His Spirit and His power uh-huh. is what is being declared in your testimony of God. That's true. That's and what He's true. done. Again, man will work up your emotions yes, he will. for a response. But only God uh-huh. can bring a response and a result yes, can. out of you and out of your life. Yes, Lord, Devoted to Christ and not a cause. Who is Jesus to you? Something to think about as we got just a very few minutes here. Right. In closing, but who is Jesus to you? I hope we're devoted to the person of Christ, the passion that He had, the the unction, and and yes, He's He was God in the Spirit, but He toted this flesh. He knows exactly what we are battled with and what we go through, and and the emotions and the the roller coasters that we get on. He has been there, He has done that, and He has overcame, and He has gave us the victory. Amen. Last week we talked about being equipped for warfare. We are in the battle to win, and we win in the end. So just gird up. That's right. Indeed. Get into that place. If you're guilty for sitting there thinking things about people you ought not to, yeah. repent and find the will of God that He has for your life. True, Mom, true. All of us have different seasons. Sure and I've had to learn that. And I tell you what, I enjoy those seasons of rest a lot more than I did in the beginning. Hallelujah. That's maybe why I don't get too many of them now. But I appreciate God. Yes, Lord. Because I'm devoted to the person of Christ. I'm not devoted to a cause. No. But I am devoted to the one yes, that made that change. I made a response and He gave me the results because it was His Spirit that led me that Sunday morning down to an old-fashioned altar and offered me the gift of salvation. What a day, what a day, what a day. Never had a day like that ever before. I've had great blessings. Oh, wonderful experiences. But ain't nothing like that day when He came and He rolled my sins away. I walked out of that church a new creature in Christ. I was free. free no. I was free. Free, free, free. And all that I had ever done That's right. was remembered no more. No more. Thank God is a good God. Yes, Being devoted to Christ and not a cause. We thank You for tuning in and may the Lord bless the rest of your day.